Is a $3,200 Tainu cover worth it? This is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Let's talk about it. Now, of course, there are a ton of other Tano covers out there on the market for way cheaper. I've covered a bunch of them on the channel. If you're looking for something a little bit more budget friendly, I'll link them in the description down below. Today, I wanna to talk about this Retrax EQ. Now, I wanna say thank you very much to the sponsor of this video, realtruck.com. They've been a supporter of the channel for quite some time. If you watch this video before December 3rd of 2023, they've decided to extend all of their cyber deals through December 3rd. So I will link them again in the description down below. They've got everything you could possibly imagine, be it floor mats, lighting, suspension, wheels and tires. So again, I highly recommend you check them out. And without you guys, of course, none of this stuff would be possible. So I very much appreciate the support of you guys watching the channel. If you find value in the videos, if you could do me a favor, hit that subscribe button down below. It goes a long way to help support the channel. Now, at the time of filming this video, this Retrax EQ retails for $3,199. What makes this tonneau cover very unique, this cover actually ties in to your electronics in your truck itself. So you can use the key fob from your vehicle. As you see here, if I just unlock three times, the cover will start to run. And then if I lock three times, it'll stop. And now three times it'll run itself back the other way. So this cover actually ends up feeling very much like an OEM accessory, which is really nice. Let's head back to the garage and I'm gonna to talk to you guys about what it was like to install this. Before we get into the install of this cover, I do wanna go over a few features. These T-slots give you the ability to add ladder racks, rooftop tents, Unlocking three times gets the light to turn on. These are the beefiest by far in terms of a clamp that I've used to install a tonneau cover. And I have a funny feeling that has to do with the fact that this thing will hold 500 pounds of weight on those bed rails. The overall fit and finish on this thing is fantastic. Now I did have to modify my Harbor Freight two gallon compressor. Luckily these things aren't really that expensive, so it's not that crazy to do, but there was a, a handle to carry this thing. I just lopped it off at the top of the control panel here, so now there is not a handle. I just ordered some little rubber inserts or plastic inserts off of Amazon, popped them in the top, and honestly, it looks like it came that way. Now I can slide this back. I've actually got these things nutserted into the bed of the truck. Makes this somewhat of a semi-permanent, but obviously removable, so now, that's in there. Got the compressor, the off-road jack, my swing cases with all of my tools. Now, naturally, a lot of people, when they look at these kinds of covers, are not going to want to deal with losing any space at the front of the truck. For me, it's not a big deal because if I'm gonna grab a four by eight sheet of plywood, the way that I'm going to load this in the truck is going to be over top of the tailgate. Any of those building materials are going to kind of slant down in the bed of the truck and go underneath that canister. Anyways, having a foot of storage space underneath there is sufficient. The only time that really becomes an issue is if you're hauling like a couch or you know some large piece of furniture, a fridge, something like that. But you can run to Home Depot and get a trailer. I find that loading and unloading larger stuff like that off of a trailer that's lower to the ground is just a better experience in general. And trucks do better hauling trailers, you know, trailer loads than they do payload in the bed of the truck. I think a lot of this stuff comes from people watching way too many commercials where they're dropping, you know, tons and tons of stone in the back of these pickup trucks. And having this like bravado of how much you can carry in the bed of the truck. But truth be told, uh, it's much better to trailer that stuff anyways. And that's how I prefer to carry larger stuff. So for me, in the bed of the truck is going to be expensive things, cameras, uh, tools, things like that, that um, I just don't need all of that space in the bed of the truck. In terms of control, I already showed you, you can operate it with the key fob, which is a fantastic OEM type experience, but they also have an app. And this app is all controlled over Bluetooth and you have the ability now to come in here and operate the tonneau cover. I can say uh, close and now it'll start running the cover closed. 
I do have a tailgate control. So if I'm doing anything in the bed of the truck and I have my phone on me, I can pretty much access the entire system here. Retrax also sent out this keypad, which is something that you could theoretically attach to the back of the truck here and wirelessly access the tonneau cover. This is an anti-pinch feature that should, if all goes well, stop when it hits the four x four here. It does so and it runs itself back a little bit as well. Now they also have this cinch mode and what you'll see is as the cover runs up, it makes contact, it'll run itself back as an anti-pinch, but if I tell it to close again, now it'll run up, just make enough contact with whatever I have in there and cinch it tight. And that is, it's in there. So really nice feature to be able to cinch what you have back to the tailgate if you were to choose to do that. Now, the only real critique that I have on this cover that I wish they would change, giving you the ability to run with one of your three garage door openers. I honestly feel like I'm just grasping for straws in terms of things that maybe I don't like about the cover. But aside from that, this thing is pretty ridiculous. Talking about installation of this Tanu cover, I went back and checked the camera. I actually, it's part of why I have a security camera in the garage, that and obviously security, but I wanted to be able to go back and track how long it took me to do these kinds of projects. This one, removing a couple times, I took a break for dinner. There was another break in between there and some general camera moves for batteries, things like that. I came up with about five hours. Now I think you could best that time because even in that five hours, I'm spending time moving cameras, doing things like that. So I think you could actually do this in about maybe four hours. I was pleasantly surprised by that. I've done enough of these covers to know that they can be kind of uh, daunting. Now, I'm certainly not the world's strongest man, so six, one, uh, 210 pounds or so right now. The back side of this is pretty legit. You can see a uh, control module back there. Not a whole lot of hardware here, which is a good sign for installation. This was basically just a couple screws to attach the side rails to the canister. And I would say most of the hard work was number one, lifting it into the bed of the truck. I thought I could do it myself. Absolutely could not. It was way heavier than I had anticipated and just more awkward, I think, to maneuver. So I was able to get the canister up on the tailgate, but once I actually had the rails on there, it was just too much to manage to try to get it up over the edge of the truck without possibly damaging something. So called in the reinforcements for that one. Oh, uh, we gotta go up and over, go a little bit further. You're good, thanks. Oh wait, one second, I lost her. So running the wire harness was probably the hardest thing, aside from actually getting it all to pair up on the phone, getting it all to sync up, that was a bit of a process. There's a whole journey you have to go through of open the door, turn the ignition, hit the brake. Enter the vehicle, close all doors. Press and hold the brake. Open the door. Release the brake. I think I heard this thing run back. It did run back. Oh, so it's working. It just seemed like it was a lot of work to get that done, but that was just procedural. So it was going through it enough times until you got it to work out and then it was fine. So now that it's up and running, it's totally fine. And I think this cover is an absolute banger. I love it. All right, so back here in the studio with the car wash results, we're gonna go over it. So we have three different camera angles, truck bed overview out of the back window. We also have the inside of the truck bed and then of course going through the car wash. This is all synced up. Tailgate, I close it here. You can see it come up as it closes in this picture there. And then the entire car wash we come through and you will see as I come out here, uh, come around the back of the bed, open it up. There it goes, drops down. You see the tailgate drop down and I grab the camera. What I'm looking for is when the car wash really dumps a boatload of water, here you can see it all heading over towards the passenger side. Uh, the truck on the car wash, it must just be tilted that direction a little bit so all the water flows over there. And with that, now what I'm looking for is on the passenger side. So the only thing I saw was right up in this corner here. 
just the smallest amount of soap suds and no water coming down through the bed rail. Now the beauty of this setup with this cover is that the rails actually have a channel. So even if water does get in around that, which it will, it's going to run those rails and then run out the uh, the, the truck uh, from the backside. So it'll basically dump into this canister and it'll run out these drain tubes down the bottom and um, out of the bulkhead. So here we are. That was the first major dump of water. Now we've got the brushes. I don't see any water coming in. Still don't see any water coming in. Now I do have the bed rug in the back of the truck. So if there's any water, small amounts of water, they might trickle down behind that bed rug. I'm looking for just any major massive uh, water intrusion spots and I've yet to see any so far. Uh, let's see here. There's a piece of dust floating around. All right, here is our first bit of water intrusion on the back of the truck. This is why I love the car wash test because the rinse cycle of the car wash is going to represent the most torrential downpour that you could possibly imagine. That is a boatload of water. And as every one of these tonneau covers does, it let water over the tailgate. Now I wanted to come out here to the garage to show you guys why the water intrusion that you saw on the tailgate was not nearly as bad as what it might look like. And that is because of the tailgate design in and of itself. You have a cut in here and you can see, if I shoot back, this is not flush. So the seal, as it sits up on the tailgate, naturally is going to have just this channel that exists in the plastics and there's going to be a spot for water to get in. I would say it actually performed almost flawlessly, which is pretty crazy. And this is the one problem where a good amount of water is gonna get in there because of the built-in steps. At the tailgate, this kind of water intrusion is really not a big deal because it just runs the inside of the tailgate and drops out of the bottom. Any of that water without the bed rug is going to just hit the tailgate, run down and drain out the bottom without really getting anything inside wet. So what I'm looking for with these water tests is along the side rails, which those tend to do fairly well. This is an area that I also take a look at. If there was any water coming through here, you'd see some suds kind of coming through or dropping down the front end there. Uh, so that seems to be a very solid uh, result as well. Also right behind that massive water dump, you can see the air blowing off and that's usually what'll drive some water in if there is any weak spots there and I just don't see anything there. Makes sense to me, this thing seemed to be a, a really solid uh, installation so I'm not surprised by these great results that I've seen here. What I am very surprised by is every one of these Tano covers that I have tested, when that air blast of the uh, dryer hits, most of them kind of concave a little bit and this is the best performing, I think, so far to that effect, which is uh, an indication of its overall uh, strength. And you can see a little bit of a ripple there, but that is some, some very, very powerful, powerful airstream hitting the top of that cover. That's definitely the best I've seen so far without you know seeing a huge uh, impact from that ripple. All in, very expensive cover, but performed very well for my water tests and um, I am very pleased with those results. So thank you very much Real Truck for again supporting the channel, sending out the cover. Huge, huge thank you to uh, the viewers of the channel who all make this very possible. I'm just overall very blown away with the quality of this cover, which for the price point, I shouldn't be. With that being said guys, thank you very much for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button down below. Remember likes go a long way to support the channel and I will see you guys next time.